speaking of that, we're going to extend this conversation to the second sticky note, which is, uh, are the 2022 market worries coming back? You know, 2023, Patrick, I think, especially into the as the spring market started taking off, people kind of like a duck have had shaken off the 2022 fiasco where the prices really came down, rates really went up. And it, that, by the way, for everyone to remember, that really started in the month of uh, April, March, April of 2022. So it was a year later where kind of the market had normalized the new rates, the market had normalized the new pricing and so on and so forth. Uh, the question is, are we going back to the fears of 2022 or are we going to be able to adapt to this relatively quickly? That's the question. Well, yeah. And I mean, we, if we go back into 2022, we know that when those rate increases came up because everybody thought that we and I guess we all thought the, the, the world thought that rates would stay low for an extended period and an ongoing period of time. And in our case, Tip Macklem looked into camera and go, rates, rates will stay, stay low for a very long time. time. I mean, he actually said that. And so when they did increase them, sentiment shifted right away. You know, everybody was freaked out and worried about where things were going. But then that all got normalized and sentiment started to shift again. And we come into 2020. 23 rate increases have come into play. People are still spending on real estate. They're actually paying more. Prices continue to go up. They normalize the rate increase. Cool. Sentiment is positive. And by the way, the economy overall seemed pretty good. You know, job uh, job uh, or unemployment rate was still very, very low. I mean, things were looking pretty great. And then boom, rate increase. Now what's going to happen is the sentiment is going to shift again, which we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's uh, you know I think what's fascinating about this, Patrick, is is I think we're gonna we're gonna digest this one as as a community as investors. Now, homeowners that may be different, right? Because homeowners have a completely different. Those watching this show, most of you are are investors, but homeowners they may not digest this as much because it has a, a a different impact on them than it does to us as investors. But I think investors are really starting to see the the, the forest through the trees, if you will. Uh, if you're a sophisticated investor, if you're in, if you're educating yourself, if you're watching this show, then you know what the realities of the market are and you have a really long term perspective. You're thinking 5, 10, 15, 20 years out. And as a result, you understand that you're going to be making decisions today, which in the short term may be a little bit painful, like getting into the market when the interest rates are a little higher. But, you know, you're going to benefit in the long term, Patrick. And I think that I, that I know a lot of real estate investors I'm talking to. They're more active now that they've been in the last two, three, four years because the opportunities are really showing up. Sellers want to sell. Uh, deals want to get done. People want to get into property. Uh, so it's it's kind of fascinating. But it really depends. It really depends. And this is kind of ultimately where I think this conversation goes, which is it depends on how the investor feels about their own confidence. You often talk about consumer confidence, Patrick, and I, I'm on board with that. I understand the economic impact of consumer confidence, but I think investors have to take hold of their own confidence. This is about creating your own economy and not relying on the outside world to tell you what you should be doing. Because if you do that, then you're always going in the same direction as everybody else. And as a result, you're not going to see the big opportunities. Well, I think, you know, you hit it right on. Homeowners definitely are in a different category. That's a very emotional buy. They're being hit by these rate increases. And of course, uh, that really affects their budgets because on top of that, we see taxes escalating. And do not mistake the reality of taxation. You know, that carbon tax, paying more for gas, paying more for everything actually is eating into that disposable income. And of course, which would then represent what you could afford to pay at that interest rate. So that's one part of it. From an investor point of view, there is no doubt that even some of the sophisticated investors that I've talked to are kind of getting a little bit quiet for for the one primary reason, which is they had variable rate mortgages and they're they're seeing their payments increase and their cash flow is either limited or it's even upside down a little bit. And they're just really stuck in that mode of going, I've just got to manage what I've got here until things start to settle down, maybe rate increase or the maybe there's some decreases in the rates or I can do something different and uh, get my cash flow back to where I need it to be. For those who have some liquidity, for those who have got uh, good cash flowing portfolios to begin with or even break even, this is, to your point, opportunities are starting to show up a lot. I think the other thing, JG, is that is in the property types, lots of condos, deals being had in behind the scenes, particularly in Toronto, not as much in Vancouver, of just people who got caught thinking that they're going to assign those deals 
and that they weren't ever going to have to get the mortgage. Well, that, of course, came off the rails. We've talked about that many times. So there's a lot of things going on in the market. But ultimately, within that chaos is always the opportunities for those who go out and kind of go fishing, if you will, and looking for those kinds of deals. Because there's lots of motivated vendors that are sitting in behind the scenes going, how the hell do I get out of this? Yeah, absolutely, Patrick. So interesting. I think the market's going to shrug this one off faster uh, than, you know, and we've gone through a lot. We'll see what, uh, what the Bank of Canada keeps doing. When's the next rate increase, Patrick? Well, guess what? Everybody's got it scheduled. They're penciling it in for July. They're saying another rate increase in July. That's going to keep that fear and people touching the break until, uh, I think, until uh, after that next uh, potential rate increase in July. Next announcement. I'm, st I'm sticking with my call, Patrick. I think they're going to decrease in July. And I I'm just going to, by the way, just going to stick with that call until it comes true, uh, you know. I'm I'm trying to manifest the future here. You're like you're like the clock, you know, you're going to be right at some point. So there you go. You know. Exactly. If you like what you learned here, go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.